Going somewhere completely new, different and foreign is always exciting, but also a bit scary and confusing at times. Whether it's going abroad for study, relocation, or just traveling for a well-deserved cruise vacation to cool off on some exotic island. I think most of us need this at this particular time. Traveling abroad is a lot more than just packing your clothes and taking off to the airport. There are many important things that you need to prepare before you go. But do not worry. Just follow these simple tips to get your logistics correct in order to ensure smooth sailing. So let's start with research and planning. I would say research the country that you are going to. Research everything about that country, but I'll be taking them one after the other. So let's talk about your destination. Check the requirement of the countries that you want to go to. As a frequent traveler, one thing I had wished I'd done before some of my previous trips internationally was making time to learn more about the countries that I will be traveling to. I think you will appreciate where you're going to better when you have more context. Im, Im, Chin, We, Ran. Im, Chin, We, Ran. That's the name of the word. Im, Chin, is uh traditional Kore korean yeah. year name <laughs> so as you're planning your entertainment for your trip include some stuff that is educational that will teach you more about the people the culture and the country that you will be traveling to no matter how cool and open-minded you are you are probably going to experience culture shock no amount of research is going to change that however it's always good to go prepared if the country is more traditional maybe you may consider packing clothing accordingly research about their food okay research about the language that you've been using in the particular country especially if you've chosen a non-speaking english country or a language other than your country's national language Buongiorno. 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 so if you don't speak the local language a helpful trick is to download google translate to your mobile phone you might also want to consider learning a few key phrases before you head out. Hopefully you will pick up many more words. Have an idea about the weather that you will experience while you are there by reading up of the weather pattern and other information about the area before you leave home as well as finding out about the cost of living in that particular country. For example, how much will I be spending every month? Where will my money be going to every month? You have to find out. You may be surprised by what a major difference in lifestyle and amenities there is between one country and another. So these are the things you have to find out. How much does housing cost? How much does clothing cost? What about entertainment? How much will it cost me to transport from one place to the other if I'm looking for a job? And then what about medical expenses? How does it work there? What if I'm sick and I want to go to hospital? How do I go about doing that? These are all the things that you need to find out. So this is where being prepared for your trip comes into play. Take note of any potential surprises when setting up an itinerary so that they don't ruin your plans before they even start. When it comes to your accommodation, one question I always ask people is that if they are planning on staying with friends or family members during their visit abroad, and if that is the case, let them know beforehand. This isn't the right address. Find out if they have enough space for you, especially if they are also trying to make a living for themselves as it's mostly the case. Will they have enough room to accommodate me? If not, what other plans do you have for your accommodation? Find out all about these things that I'm asking you to do. It may be wise to make an extra arrangement beforehand through Airbnb or a similar services, regardless your options. Be realistic about the expenses and take more money with you than you think you will use. As you know, emergencies and unexpected opportunities may arise. Therefore, you have to be prepared. So that brings us to documentation. What papers do you need? Before you start collecting those colorful stamps all over the world, you need somewhere to put them first. For starters, 
international travel requires an updated passport you will need enough pages in your passport for visa stamps why most countries only require a quarter page for their stamp others require a half page or more so if this is your first trip abroad that shouldn't be an issue since you have a brand new passport with plenty of blank pages to play with so the question now is do you have an international passport if your answer is yes congratulations as it is the first step to planning your trip aside your already decided destination therefore double check the expiration dates even with a valid passport do not assume that your passport is valid up to the expiring date some countries require that your passport stay valid for at least six months after the end of your trip in addition to this some airlines won't let you board if you do not meet that requirement as well and if you do not have a passport or it is due for renewal then it is time for you to go get a new one you need to apply in person at your local immigration office be prepared to provide proof of citizenship an extra form of identity and recent documents photos and it is important to start your passport applications several months before your flight dates especially if you need visas from foreign embassies you can visit the immigration website for more information on how to renew or getting a new passport The wisest thing to do now is checking the travel requirement for our destination. Once you have your passport sorted out, check to see if you need a visa. And if you require a visa, do not rush to start the visa process. And I'm going to tell you why. First off, look into the current medical or vaccination requirements of the country that you are traveling to. From the way the world is right now, things can change very quickly. So I suggest checking the official government website for the countries you're traveling to to make sure you meet the requirements. Most of these medical requirements are part of the documents needed for visa issuance. You need them to apply for your visa. You may need a yellow fever vaccine because it's required when you're traveling to most uh, African countries. It's really, really very important because this can actually cost you your tree. Tuberculosis tests, COVID-19 vaccine, etc., etc. If you're unsure about which vaccine are recommended for your trip, I'm going to leave some links for you to check out so that you can find out the information regarding your travel requirements and entry restrictions for international destination. That's what it covers. You may also check the Center for Disease Control and Prevention. They have a great website that offer the most up-to-date information regarding vaccination and shots that are needed or recommended it's time to check out visas visas are the permission given by a country to enter its borders and stay there for an extended period of time visa specifics vary for every country but the bottom line is the same it is tedious and it takes a while check if you require a visa well ahead of departing some visas require more effort and money than others if you get frustrated while waiting in line at the bank just think about how long it can take for government institutions in several countries to get something done so make sure to check the relevant government website 60% of world's country require visas for any length of stay find out the one that you are qualified for and take care of any paperwork I will also advise that you learn a new skill. What is your current profession? What do you do for a living? So maybe you can consider learning a new skill to add to the one that you already have. All right, it's very important. So depending on what you're going to do abroad, for instance, if you're relocating abroad, definitely you intend to work when you get there. I suggest you get a police report. Be mindful that the police report is only valid for six months. So. Have you already gotten the job that you want to do abroad? If you have, then consider getting a police report towards the time that you're leaving. Don't just get it now. Maybe you plan to leave the country in the next five, six months, and then you now start getting your police report now. No. So when you are ready to leave the country, probably when you have gotten your visa and you know that you're leaving the country, maybe in the next two weeks or in the next one month, 
begin to make inquiry on how to get a police report so these are the things that you're still going to put on your checklist it all depends on what you're going to do abroad if you're going to work over there you need a police report what about your international driving license you also need that one as well you've got your visa now congratulations once again for crossing this hurdle it's not easy people pray fast even going as far as doing deliverance on their passports in fact you can't even begin to imagine how far people can go and can do to get a visa my dear they're unfair so let's find you a travel date how far in advance should you start booking your trip unfortunately this is hard to tell no matter what the best time to book is whenever you have the money <laughs> okay and are ready to commit to your first international trip and if you are under 26 years old you can get flight discounts just for being young imagine look at the flights are searching jeans like a student universe to nab a youth discount or if you are a student and need to book your flight soon you can find discounted airfare on scholar trip i'm going to leave a link to that so that you can nab a youth discount make sure you click on round trip option for each country as many airlines will not board you on a one-way flight that is if you are doing the booking yourself but i recommend using a certified travel agent since it is your first time internationally though i travel frequently i still make even up until today use of travel agents they can be a good travel resource time to look into securing your trip this one is very important so let's talk about your insurance i know insurance is probably the last thing you want to think about when you're going on a trip but it is a good thing to have in the event that things don't go as planned a lot of people especially nigerians do not buy travel insurance and travel insurance companies in nigeria are not even helping matters they are not taking advantage of the huge opportunity available for them in the travel sector so let's go put it to test do you buy travel insurance? No, I don't. Do you buy travel insurance when you travel? Mm. Often a while, yes, I do. Honestly, I didn't check the name <laughs> and all that. I don't know anything about it here in Nigeria. They don't advertise, they don't tell me anything about it. Maybe they need to educate people more about travel insurance. In some travelings, I buy travel insurance because it is necessary to buy, like in the European Union countries. It is mandatory for anybody going into European countries to buy travel insurance. Travel insurance can cover trip cancellations, medical emergencies, as well as lost luggage. I advise people that they shouldn't leave home without it. Find out how you can insure your trips, all right, so that we will not have a story that touches the heart later on. So these are the things you should research. Now it's time to go shopping. So make a list. Write down your needs. <laughs> you alone know what you will be needing i'm talking of essentials so make a list of what you think are necessary for your trip there are many accessories on the market that you know can make travel easier safer and more comfortable and did i forget that if you're traveling to spend time with your loved ones or your friends you know nigerians travel with a whole lot of food stuff find out the kind of things you're supposed to take abroad there's some food that are prohibited that you cannot take abroad when you're traveling so visit the government website to know do's and don'ts what should i bring will they allow me to carry a fish into that country and if yes what's the quantity what about dry meats what about fresh meat what about crayfish what about uh, fresh uh, you know vegetables am i allowed to bring them into the countries that i'm going to you have to make sure that you find out what it is that you need and you do not need so with these tips you'll be able to hit the ground running the bottom line living abroad is one of the most amazing experiences a person can have be prepared for your time abroad can make all the difference in settling in quickly to be able to experience and enjoy life in a new country no matter where you go there will be so many things to remember that is why you should create a list that will help you track everything you want to bring with you this checklist can come in handy and you won't forget a thing 
I hope you enjoyed this list of mine. I wish you a wonderful journey as we prepare for your first.